I I am handed this EP right yes and uh, what I didn't understand was because I was given files that were really nice and I still remember the first time I loaded up the drum tracks they were on point like completely on point like the, I I mean I I disagree I think I played some very whatever stuff there but I mean yeah I, it was very I rushed mean, and I wasn't very happy with the yeah, parts but, but compared to you know. 99% of the stuff you get where you have to spend at least 2 days like aligning the drums and oh my god that it, sounds horrible yeah, yeah. cuz cuz people don't have that experience of going into a studio yeah, yeah, and recording yeah. like I know a lot of people who are great players live but as soon as you give them a headphone and some click they're like yo what is happening <laughs> yeah okay so the, and uh, then after <coughs> that it was just like you would normally receive feedback from either the vocalist or the guitar player of the band in terms of how you would want like to instruct a, a producer of how you want the sound to be yeah yeah but in this scenario it was like i was getting uh, all sorts of feedback and all sorts of ideas uh, from uh, not just moses or kavya but from you as well and amar as well so it was like we it wasn't just a thing where i was working in silos from the rest of the band mm-hmm. it was like a continuing conversation that all of us had yeah like that gmail thread is long yeah <laughs> extremely <laughs> extremely <laughs> long but it was nice cuz it was sort of also my first proper project right like i had done a lot of stuff f- for my own thing i had done a lot of stuff for other people yeah uh that was sort of very small time but this was sort of like the first like okay this has to be really good yeah 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 um and uh i remember you had even come in one day and given ideas that yeah. you know we can do this we can do that so just like a lot of small things here and there that consequently i would do as well because yeah. that's the kind of information or uh, rather the detail i put to everything i do yeah i mean i like to do that even if i don't get paid or uh, as much as i should be yeah yeah i'm just like i can't uh, again it goes back to that thing of if you're doing it. something yeah, do it well. if you're doing something then do it properly like however yeah. much it costs uh, the other person or how, however much you're in it for yeah no man especially like, like if, yeah if you're doing something and you do it really well then people okay, don't notice yeah that project may not be paying you really well but it is worth it because at the end of the day it's a product that you believe in and you never that product will go out somewhere someone will listen to it and they'll yeah. be like holy shit i want to work with the person who produced this and that guy come with a big bucks you yeah, never exactly. know you know but like i remember i remember i remember i think it was a so far so we know her name no her name right so much fun. and uh, keshav was like so you had come in and abhilash had come in keshav had not i think keshav had gone downstairs to pick up something and he came back and he looked at me and he was like even without saying hi or anything he was like bro what the fuck did you do with the moscow ep it sounds huge i was like oh shit yeah i mean um, it sounded great man yeah. we were really happy with the final product especially because i mean again no taking names and what not but the, i mean we just weren't happy with the direction it was taking production wise with the people we were working with initially and um yeah like i said you say this <laughs> <laughs> but yeah since then we have been uh, mostly chilling i think it's that, that is also a very important thing that i think people need to get back to like people yeah. have also become very like really work oriented and agenda driven that's agenda, actually the, yeah. that's a problem yeah. i feel like work oriented is one thing that's great like if you have work I, i mean work oriented in terms of being agenda driven ki yahi karna hai aur bas yahi karna hai nothing else that and also oh i want to maintain this relationship because this person can do hmm. this for me hmm. that's yeah i mean you know that's a, a very like i i don't know that at least for me it doesn't feel like something that is genuine enough to last very long a and b i also feel like that's a very pretentious way of looking at relationships and, yeah, and a very objectifying way of looking at uh you how you want to maintain your own mental health or your 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 own relationships in the in this scene which in any case is so like scattered hmm. half the time mm-hmm. and if your relationships in that in in that framework are also you know fragile and fake then what's the point yeah you know, exactly i think you should build bonds with people of course work 
work oriented bonds because that's where it often starts but then if you feel like there's something more to the relationship then that should be something that builds on its own with its own time and in its own way rather than having to you know constantly try and keep messaging someone all the time being like hey bro you want to hang out today mm. and then have nothing to really talk about but yeah. you're just like yeah actually you know maybe he can give me a discount on my next ep if i if i want someone to track guitar so i should just you know stay in touch with this guy and butter him up and like is that so like and i have uh, i get that i get that from a few people and i'm yeah. like to like if you were actually sitting and in a in a space where we could have a conversation i would honestly not have a conversation with yeah. you because you're not going to be able to talk to yeah. anything else yeah. about me because that's the impression you have given me all this time yeah and uh, otherwise th- again it goes back to like what are you really trying to do because one thing that i have figured out in, in not just this industry or any industry is that you don't need to have just good connections you need to have good relationships with people yeah and, and that only comes with exactly. a if you're a good person yeah and b if you treat people with respect not just for the job they do but as individuals as well exactly because then if you do that then everything else is just fun even if it's work it's yeah, fun it's fun so um what what are you currently doing now what am i currently doing now right now i am uh, hoping that this virus doesn't take my life but uh, it's no, not it's, but yeah this alarmist stuff like okay it is a genuinely problematic thing that has happened but i also feel like the hype around it is been blown out of proportion like i think yeah just chill <laughs> like yeah, just like be, be just hygienic yeah. and like be hygienic, be aware, and be cautious of what you're doing and when you're doing it. But jeez, don't be stupid. Yeah, man, come on, don't blow it out to like this. Anyway, I'm not even going to get into this right now. <laughs> It's not important. With the with the state of affairs right now, a lot of a lot of shows have been cancelled, and yeah. um, it's very sad. Uh, but that's the first thing that usually gets hit art and education yeah. is where because you know <laughs> but uh, so schools colleges all that stuff shut down all those shows are done with then pubs are now cancelling their shows yeah. festivals are cancelling their shows so were you were you going to go with uh, kumo for uh, south the, her us tour no no yeah, this okay. time so last time around we had a very unfortunate situation that happened where my visa got rejected damn uh, because uh, you know they didn't build the wall so let's just try and get brown skin people to like yeah. <laughs> stay away anyway but yeah that happened so she i mean everyone involved ended up losing a lot of money in the process because tickets had already been booked and mm. the visa application cost a bit so yeah uh this time around she was uh of course needless to say going to do a full tour yeah. and i feel like uh she had already kind of arranged herself uh, in a way where she she knew what she wanted to do and she was going to play her solo sets and kill it over there um but no i wasn't going to go this time around and i think that was largely because of the fiasco that was last time trying to get my okay. trying yeah. to get my stuff booked and what not um but uh, but yeah that being said uh, a lot of stuff that had been planned for this month luckily enough was already pushed mm. to uh, later months because there were certain things that had happened certain delays here and there which had come up uh, in Uh, a lot of the stuff that i've been working on uh, for the large for a large chunk of 2019 and most of 2020 mm-hmm. now so that stuff's been pushed to may april may and uh, whatever shows i did have coming up have unfortunately mostly been cancelled um, but that being said it's given me a lot of time to just work on myself get some time to really really you know get better and practice and uh, i've been playing a lot of guitar and been playing a lot of um playing around with a, with some production stuff and mm. just really getting into parts of my everyday musical adventures that I can't actually do when I'm when I'm touring a lot and I I think it's very important for musicians especially session musicians to understand that uh when you do have a down season and you're not getting calls very often or something like this happens where there are, there's an unforeseeable circumstance that cancels your shows it's so easy to go into that space where you're just like what am i doing with my yeah, life yeah. i'm not getting money now i'm just going to kill myself tomorrow because everything sucks i think what's really important is to realize that it is actually also 
kind of cool that you don't yeah. have anything happening for that point for that moment in time where you can just actually relax it's a it's a vacation that has been given to you yeah 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 and what you do with that time can really make or break your next your, your next step in your career like definitely, if you have definitely. one entire month off you can just yeah, practice definitely. and yeah. get really really uh, involved in your instrument to the point where you've made improvements uh, in your playing which maybe weren't there before so now when you step on stage and play your next gig you're coming back with a brand new arsenal and you're mm-hmm. going to maybe impress someone who you yeah. didn't impress before and yeah. they're going to want you on board for another gig or what not so i think that's really important and i think it's also very important in this career to just be very creative with how you approach it for example experimenting with what you think you like doing because a lot of people just get stuck in the session rut and they think mm-hmm. that this is all i like doing mm-hmm. i want to be on stage stage mm-hmm. but then you don't realize mm-hmm. that there's so much other stuff that you may be yeah, passionate yeah, yeah. about yeah because, exactly like taking yeah. time to do stuff that you normally wouldn't do because although you're still doing music as you know the thing that you want to do it's still a job yeah so it's taking a better part of your life exactly so it, it, taking time off you know you could spend time with your family spend time with people you always wanted to spend time with but you weren't able to because you were busy you know touring or busy yeah. are always out working and uh, doing stuff that you say always wanted to, to do but never got the time for you like like yeah like that's that's what i did like the 2017 and 2018 was just me completely on the music thing of it like yeah. i need to do this i need to do xyz i had and you were putting out a lot of stuff like, at that time sort of like goals planned i was like okay this is what i need to do and when all of that was done i was like I was done with that and I was even done writing a bunch of other stuff so I was like okay now I can just take time off focus more on producing focus more on things that I want to do and I just took the entire 2019 off yeah exactly and that's that's so I, important because I I had done enough where it was like okay financially speaking if I'm talking about sustaining what I'm doing as this music thing it was not in a situation where Uh, I mean it would have been incredibly stupid of me to uh, go I'm going to take a break for a year if I was in complete debt. Yeah. <laughs> like that would have been extremely stupid. Yeah. But the album had made all its money back. I started producing bangs. I was making extra money. Like I was not just savings but yeah. beyond like extra money to just splurge. So yeah. I was just like okay I have now enough time to just focus on myself focus on the people around me yeah. and that uh, not just that I took that time to start networking and start talking to more people that I usually wouldn't that I again in relation to music would only meet say at a gig yeah which is incredibly rare yeah yeah because nowadays the way programming is and the way it is you're probably going to go to a gig where there's an international band otherwise you're not going yeah because it just it it's not feasible anymore unless it's a show where you, you yeah. know that it's a band that yeah, you can yeah, follow yeah, and yeah, you really yeah. want to go check them out yeah. but, but yeah i get and what i think what you brought up was really important like uh, not 2019 you took off but you also did it knowing that there are other things that you want to do but yeah. those things didn't necessarily mean that you weren't surrounding uh, your time as in you weren't occupying your time slots in your day with something that wasn't music you were working on production you were working on things that eventually are, is going to make you money things that are important to your career in in music which does not revolve around playing guitar does not revolve around actually just playing an instrument it's something yeah. that completely involves a completely different set of skills which you're working on at yeah, the same yeah, time yeah. not just that but there are people who who dabble to different art forms at the same exactly. time exactly yeah, yeah different yeah, things yeah, yeah. So I didn't realize I was passionate about teaching until until I started teaching. Now I have something that I do when I'm not touring which is definitely get, getting money in, but it's also something I enjoy doing. It's not like I'm sitting at home and staring at my students face like man I could be literally doing anything else but looking mm-hmm. at this, this guy's face. But I actually enjoy watching them progress. I enjoy watching what they're doing and uh they teach like I I end up learning so much more because you end up getting so much more coherence just by explaining something to someone else. and um just exploring different ideas with them especially when they get a little more advanced so i i mean that's a side of me that i didn't that i didn't ever imagine becoming something that would you know be something i'd even consider part of my career but it is it's very much yeah. is 
same with production i'm sure like when when you started playing guitar you never imagined yourself sitting in a room with a laptop and two monitors and actually mixing a band oh yeah but definitely it happened and yeah. you're very good at it and it was all it, yeah. the initially it was all like i don't have money yeah. i need to do stuff myself but f- fuck the money man even something like this like what you what we're doing right now yeah. just a podcast like it's it's just it's something you wanted to do and yeah. there was no it's agenda something behind I've it i always wanted to do yeah there's no agenda because, behind uh, it because i i felt like I feel like it's 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 something that I did because especially when I got into this whole radio thing that I did in college, I was lucky enough to interact with bands that people dream of talking to. Yeah. Like I talked to Carnival. I talked to bands that are just on there on that yeah. level. Yeah. And and there's this incredible myth factor in music or any art form that subsists that is obviously. important for the identity of that artist or that band but i always want i always had that experience that they're just people yeah and this is what i've always wanted to do because uh, whenever we sit down even normally and have conversations our conversations are not not that different than what we are having right now yeah. the only difference right now is that it's probably a bit directed in a certain way yeah. but even when we sit down and talk it's all it's always about all these general things that we always talk about talk about because we're in it the entire time mm. and i think that's something that's really missing information is zilch like yeah. i am still surprised today that people message me asking how should i promote what i'm doing and i'm just like i think but you know that that's actually an important question because i feel like a lot of people just don't have the kind of uh as do especially now I think that it's very important to understand that kids coming up nowadays playing music and trying to promote their music out there uh that there are very few innovative ways left to use um your online presence to promote something without either having a PR uh without having PR backing you or without having you know a really wide network of people who are willing to share your music when we were when we were coming up and you know putting our music out there a there weren't as many acts putting on music yeah. and b there also was uh there were there were limited ways in which you could promote yourself on social media and so people had to come up with innovative ways mm. to do it so when you do mm. like like how tough on tobacco did that incredible photo shoot yeah uh, i still remember yeah, that photo shoot oh yeah. my god that that was enough yeah, for yeah, me yeah, to yeah, be like yeah, yeah. who are these guys i, I want, want to, to check them out yeah you know now there there are so many quirky ways of doing photo shoots so much different like so much music so much uh, i don't know there's just too many approaches to to being mm. able to promote yourself and it often just flies under the rug because you haven't built uh, a fan base yet that is following your music so how do you make that first impression how do you put your music out there if you're someone who's never been heard before you're someone who's new around uh, the scene and doesn't know what step to take and i don't think there's any easy way to really do it i think you just have to suck it up and put it out there and then i guess but it's like for me it's Also I think that now if you're starting a new project there has never been a better time. Yeah. Because if you were to like I think people take that approach with everything else that they do but they don't really take that approach when it comes to art because they feel as if it's their art and it has this like sanctity around it. Yeah. And it's like no I'm only going to do it this way like I'm here to put out music and I'm not here to sell or whatever but then if you're not here to sell then just be happy sitting at home making and making music for yourself yeah. right then why like if you want to put it out there you're not putting it out there for like people to not consume yeah it's it's a product yeah it, it, at the end of the day it is a product so the main point of this was to just have people over sit talk so that people can understand that all of these things are not some mystical fucking hoo ha that you have to go pay money for to understand or yeah, you know uh, really not. unless you have the money for it like then you can just yeah, go yeah, 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 balls yeah. out and get your yeah, yeah. PR agencies to back you but I no, think like day, stuff just life as a musician and life in the industry and in general like everyone thinks it's like i mean is that question of I'm here so how do I go from here to here and that middle bit is something that is never discussed yeah. because it's all about okay I'm doing this now I'm doing this now I'm doing that now I'm doing that and uh, oh, th- this is something that I get a lot of times is again people going like how do I do this but that's what no the people who are asking how do I do this are people who are just seeing 
this is where my music is right now as in i've made this when do i play glastonbury like I, that's yeah, not yeah, i guess that yeah that's that's what, well. what are you where yeah. is the you, you, it's not easy it's never easy like oh, yeah. it's i keep telling a lot of people this that when you choose a lot of people ask me this really ridiculous question which i used to understand now i really don't uh, people are just like so is a musical lucrative career it's l- as lucrative as you want to make it that's the e- that's that's the only answer yeah. you can give them it is like any other job if you go yeah. there and you sit at your desk and drool on the table and then, then take a shit on your boss's desk then you're, you're not going to do anything you're going to get fired and no one wants to work with you but if you are really good at what you do you're proactive with the people you're working with you are improving every single day or evolving creative ways to be uh, you know good at your instrument but also be a good musician who will not want to work with you yeah. and when one guy uh, when when or whatever someone someone on a gig is not able to make the next gig they're going to want to find the new kid on the block who's yeah. killing it and then yeah. they will call you and then you will exactly. go and you'll do a great job and maybe that yeah. person wasn't there for that gig will come back and play that gig with that same band but someone else was in the audience and they noticed that person yeah yeah they'll call yeah. you for your se- for the next session or they'll call you to come and record on an album someone else will hear your drumming on that album they'll call you on board it's just a cycle of hard work like you have to put in the work work smart make sure you're visible make sure you're doing that but it all starts here and, and be eventually open. if you're and, lucky it goes yeah, there and be open as well like and be open as well you have to be open to any kind you can't just be like okay fine i played a metal gig now i'm going to play metal gig for metal gigs for the rest of my yeah. life yeah it or i'm i'm a funk drummer and i'm going to be a funk drummer i'm a whatever like jazz guitar player i'm always going to be a jazz guitar it's great you have those skills under your belt but what are you going you to do for yourself the, yeah what are you, you going to do beyond that exactly that everybody can do Exactly and it's the same as any other career you have to adapt to new situations you have to adapt to new clients you have to be able to constantly evolve your product or find new ways of advertising find new ways of marketing yourself find new ways of marketing the package the product yeah. and a lot of people don't see it that way a lot of people think oh art it's not yeah yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it goes hand in hand with yeah, everything that, else that, and it yeah. really irritates me because it's like I know people who make art for making art for yeah. just themselves. Yeah. And like they'll draw paintings and they'll make songs and they'll write poetry and they have it just for them. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? This is my space and I completely get it. And that's amazing, yeah. Right? Like you're doing that for you. So all the rules and stipulations and whatever you're doing are based on what you want to do. But as soon as it comes out, that's gone. Exactly. Because sadly or not sadly, you in itself are a product that you have to sell for sure so if you don't look at yourself like that i think if people start looking th- uh, at themselves like that they will actually be more confident with people and they start investing yeah. like uh, just in terms of like money i remember when i was making like 3000 bucks a show back back in like 2014 and for me that was like wow yeah now you know you play a good session gig you get you get a good like 20 25k but what do you do with that money then a lot of people just take that money they either sit on it they go there buy themselves a bunch of clothes and what not they still act like children they don't know how to invest their money they don't know how to take that money and do something that's going to actually improve you even more so I also used to make that mistake. I used to yeah. drink a lot of money. I used to let it lie in the bank, go and drink, drink a lot of, uh, drink and have fun with my friends. Come back home and I'd be like, shit, yeah. I forgot that I need to buy sticks tomorrow. Yeah, I forgot yeah, that yeah, my skin yeah. tore. Yeah, that money goes into that. And then you realize you're not saving your money, and you realize that when the down season comes, you don't have money. Yeah. and then you start freaking out and then you're just like what do i do now I, is this a career that's lucrative am i going to be okay you're not you're not going to be okay if you're not smart with how you it's like it's it's not a stable job you're not going to get money at the end of every month unless you do something like teaching or you have like a whatever you're a studio tech where you get yeah, a monthly yeah, yeah, salary yeah, or what not yeah, yeah. you're not if you're a session musician you are a freela- freelancer and yeah. you are going to get money based on you like, yeah yeah so i think people need to understand that i think especially when you're young it's very easy to splurge money but if you're investing you either find a way to make sure you're saving money or you're investing in things that are actually going to improve you and then of course you have money for fun and you save that yeah. keep that aside but it's all at the end of the day i think one package deal where you approach it like a business and you approach it like someone who knows how they want to live their life as an as a growing adult you don't want to be 14 years old for the rest of your life where you are going after patties 
and lays and the coke the pepsi bottle and is being like chalo 30 rupees hai to you know it's yeah it's yeah 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 not how you want to spend the rest of your life yeah. and like people need really need to start working like yeah i'm incredibly happy that now at least in a year there's 10 or more albums or eps that are released in india yeah like i'm incredibly happy like cuz i remember when there was nothing mm. nothing yeah yeah i mean there is a, that's the thing right there's there's always going to be a boom in a certain industry uh-huh. for a certain period and then you you ride that wave and if you're lucky you capitalize on that and like you said like people keep putting out music yeah. and then they're not sure how to do it it's just about doing it yeah yeah you just do it yeah and now yeah, one of those eps was moscow yeah in 2019 yeah. where you had those 10 eps coming like so many albums came yeah. out band back then so yeah it's awesome dude it's a good it's a great industry to be a part of if you if you really really dedicate yourself to it and be I, smart uh, about th- it another thing that yeah, i think one thing that people really need to understand if i was to explain it in like one simple point is like it's no different from any other industry it's not yeah the uh, other thing is that i have people who go like oh yeah uh, banking people they work hard as shit and they've got to work really hard yeah. and you know if you get into that you get into this schedule and you your life is set same with doctor or lawyer or lawyers or whatever yeah. and i'm like this is the same shit it is there's this no guarantee this is exactly the same thing absolutely there's no guaranteed like paycheck for the initial yeah. part of it but that's it's like it's the same as investing in an education you exactly. have to invest in something it's the same as investing in a business it's the yeah. same as investing into anything that makes you lucrative uh, as a person yeah. today it's the same and demand will always waver you never know when you're going to be wanted more than you were at a certain time yeah the and ideas to keep now up. now especially when we're in a period uh, when we're at a time i mean in the world in general and specifically in our country where there is a situation where there is so much explosion of art yeah because of what we're dealing with yeah it, uh, i think the most Im- like intelligent thing to do is to make that incredibly lucrative as well yeah just go all especially now with this economy crumbling the way it yeah. is it, hopefully <laughs> if i if i really like cross my fingers hopefully at the state at which it's in now it's only going to go up from yeah. there at some point hopefully. eventually eventually but right now if it's in the shitter put your stuff out there yeah. and then ride the wave and let it come yeah. up with everything else that will come up later so yeah i mean let's that's that's like uh, it's an optimistic way of looking at it but i feel like that's the only way to really do this career to be optimistic about things and constantly just know Keep that pushing further yeah if you push further it will happen at some point and when it does happen it happens and you're happy at that time but don't get complacent yeah. in that happiness yeah 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 work towards something bigger mm-hmm. always yeah. like any other career yeah ek second mein koi ek aur question puchna hai uske baad चल रहा <laughs> Because I did not expect that. If if you guys would have, because I remember you had asked me about how crowdfunding works, and Moses had had asked me about how crowdfunding works a year back. Yeah. And a year back, I was like, "Yo, Do it's it. going to happen yeah. now." But now, when you guys announced it, I'm like, "People don't have money, yo." Like, so especially I, with the conditions that we're in, where the economy is exactly. falling all around yeah, the world, yeah, yeah. and now because of this fucking virus, everything is just. <laughs> Yeah, dead. Yeah, I was so happy to see that you know it was close to a lakh. I was like, thank fuck, man. We this has been something we've been honestly working on for so long. We started the idea was the idea kind of like uh, stemmed from us just really not having money <laughs> to invest in this album. And initially, the idea was to go absolutely balls out and get this produced in a way which. I remember that. Yeah. Minds, like, I remember just, like, that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna like, we're gonna we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to Ferris wheel record or the high fly studio and get everything done. Yeah, like, yeah. A way which you know pristine and clean. Yeah, and, Moses know. was even considering doing guitars in Bombay and what. Yeah, yeah. We were thinking of, and, exactly, yeah. and then we sat and we did the budgets and we were like, shit, 
yes. it's never going to happen yeah. and uh, it's at that it's at that point that we realize not only do we need financial backing but we need to be smart about this because we do not want to fuck this up not just not just because it's we know it's good material and we know it's stuff that we really worked our asses off on but it's also something it's a product that we uh want it done well and uh, it's taken time for us to figure out exactly uh how we wanted to approach the album but now that we have so much clarity just based on uh composition and production uh at least on those two fronts it became easy for us to figure out how we wanted to approach the crowd fund and the crowd fund was just something that we decided to do because we a wanted to raise money for the album of course but b wanted to make sure that it was something that everyone was a part of mm-hmm. it wasn't going to be this exclusive like we're going to drop an album today and then yeah. you know people can consume it if you they want you can't even do that anymore yeah like, we wanted people to be part of the process of the album being made we wanted people to actually like put their money into it and it's not a charity yeah we came yeah. up we I mean, sat it's, in, it's, yeah we have people are merch. spending money for products for it's the, not exactly. just like yeah give away throw away money absolutely which, which is something that people think crowdfunding is people are giving free money like exactly. you were not bernie sanders here absolutely like. so we sat we figured out merch designs that were absolutely yeah. uh, tailor made for the mm-hmm. crowd fund we sat and we made sure that we knew exactly what kind of perks we wanted to do and how we wanted to place them when basically making sure that this is something which people not only get involved in but also get rewarded back for mm-hmm. not just with the music but also be a part of the band in a way which is bigger than just the music yeah. which is part of the band aesthetic past part of what you know we wanted from our fans which is just people it's a people's album it's not yeah. just our album and i think cracking the cracking in itself is a band like that also like yeah we've always been always been like a very outwardly social kind of a scenario where people can come and chill and exactly. there's no like specific obligations to do anything yeah in even when it comes to like like there's a lot of bands where you have to you know listen to the music or consume it in a very specific way right right, right. whereas kraken is very sort of free form that like you can do it if you're in the gym yeah. you can listen to it if you're in the car that's awesome you go to a gig it's like you can chill and have a drink or you can you know tune in and watch it's it's it's, yeah. it's a, a something that's really like sort of a constant in that area in that part of time for sure so it really fact, makes one, sense because yeah. It's like okay, including people in doing what you're doing is already something that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. and it's just now to another level where people f- can be made to feel more special. Yeah, in fact, one of the perks in the crowd fund is uh, a date night with one of us, where it's not there's no there's no um, no real agenda other than yeah. doing something together, and it's just things that the four of us individually picked that we like to do. and people just come along with us and we do something so i think there's a coffee with coffee date with moses arcade gaming with vipul <laughs> baking with ruben karaoke with me so just things that we like to do people yeah. come come along with us spend a day and there's no agenda behind it there's no awkwardness it's just having fun doing your own thing yeah. and that's i mean that's the idea behind the album it was just supposed to be a, an experience that was warm but also helped us raise uh, the kind of money that we needed to de- deliver a product that we were going to be happy with and of course we are investing our own mm. money into it as well also 1.5 lakhs is nothing right? yeah it's not making a record it's not a lot plus the, uh, most of that money a lot of that money will go into production of the uh, yeah, exactly. of the album but also in into uh, making the merchandise and into mm. uh, shipping and what yeah, yeah 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 so it's just a very calculated uh, amount that we that we wanted to put out there and make sure that we had just about enough to help us do this and now while we did want to do big studios and work with a lot of different producers we ended up getting a lot of clarity while working on this and realizing that we had all the tools we needed with us the entire time so now it's a lot of a lot of the stuff we're doing is also very diy where we hmm. for example we're we're tracking our instruments ourselves yeah. uh we're, but we but we're doing it as a team so we all sit together we all make sure that we're there present while someone is tracking and then we get feedback right after that make sure that it's exactly what all five of us want and then we move forward from there into doing something else and then we're all sitting on things like uh you know electronic bits here and there adding layers adding synths adding what not like 
it's just it's it's been a very eye opening experience with this album mm-hmm. and that's why we've taken our time trying to figure out exactly what we wanted because we didn't want to rush a product that we knew had the potential to be great yeah uh, but like i said that doesn't mean that we're not sticking to deadlines that doesn't mean mm-hmm. that we're not sitting ev- as often as we can working on it to make sure that it is something that gets delivered as soon as possible because that is not treating a tech a business then yeah, yeah so exactly same thing with uh, most of the acts that i'm playing with uh, which is in a lab is also about to release now mm. uh, that's a new prod that's a new completely new project yeah, yeah, which yeah. we that, and that's only, incredibly interesting yeah it's that's super fun different. very yeah. cinematic and it's yeah, god's yeah, brainchild yeah, yeah. and god of uh, had us all on board for a show which ended up that lineup was just so much fun mm. and it just flowered into a band which is so nice and then we now we've recorded and we've uh we have a whole ep ready which is about to be dropped and oh, that's nice. also and yeah we because uh, uh unfortunately uh, very sadly sonam sherpa passed yeah. away uh out of respect we wanted to mm. postpone the release otherwise that yeah. ep yeah, would yeah, have dropped yeah, yeah. by now we yeah, would have been out yeah, there yeah, yeah. we decided to defer it till april so mm. now i think 15th april is when the ep comes out and then the tour is being planned accordingly oh, nice. so so yeah that's that's what i'm saying like it's always a There's always mm. a motion to it. It's yeah. keep the ball rolling no matter what happens, kind of thing, which a lot of people don't do. I think that's very important to understand. That But that that thing is like yeah. Even if it's you like dead, if you even if you set deadlines for like the end of the year, yeah, you got to meet it, man. Yeah, you got to meet it. As long as you set a deadline, you're going to have something go in motion of yeah. Following, I'm saying with your with your album, it's so cool because uh, it it's it's a very unique. a uh, way of again approaching music which is when you think about musicians who are playing non-stop in the scene all the time and then they drop an album that's different but you weren't gigging every single yeah. uh, like week or doing whatever you would you do very select shows once in a while but you dropped an album a full length album with uh, merchandise with everything you put it online you got pr done for it and uh, not only did you end up selling uh, enough material to make the money back that you put into the pr and into the production but you also made money up. yeah yeah i made for the yeah and that had nothing to do with gigs you just did that purely on the basis of how well you put your music out there yeah. and how and well you use your thing. online resources and it was the same thing like yeah. sitting down and just seeing where to spend money what to do how like the songs were so we released in may 18 yeah it was initially supposed to be out before the end of 2017 yeah and the idea was that we're going to finish this because most of it was already done uh, about because uh, an ad- an advantage was that there weren't that many songs yeah so it was like okay in terms of tick marking stuff yeah not a lot yeah um so it was close to being complete but then uh, the drums from Craig got delayed because he was touring with Steven yeah, so yeah. he didn't really have time for that plus he had a couple of paid projects yeah and uh, again it was a lot of mixture of planning things out being lucky yeah just randomly m- m- emailing people would you like to play and then Craig was like yeah i like the music i'm not i'm not going to ask you for any fee or anything mm-hmm. like that so that in itself was something but even before you know doing that i was i mapped it out saying if i ask people this is sort of the budget i'm putting aside for yeah, yeah. something like this to eventually work out yeah and stuff like that so that that was a uh, uh, very important to me and i think that that definitely was something that became a very normal practice once uh, i got a manager yeah I think that's something that people really need to do. Again, very smart. Yeah. You need yeah. someone to help you out with that kind. Because there's no. Because there's before that, I was like, I was the person creating the content. I was the person creating the music, mixing, mastering, yeah. doing the photos, doing the videos, doing every single thing, social yeah. media, yeah. all of it. Yeah. So there was no possible way I could have done it to the best of the extent that I could have done it. Right? Yeah. Right? Because I was at college and I was doing this a completely other thing and having a life in general. Yeah. Right. So once I got a manager it was like okay now a manager is going to take care of XYZ yeah and then beyond that I can just focus on what I want to do yeah For so sure. now it's like I can spend time on my music and I can spend time on creating ideas yeah yeah which then I can pitch to my manager and she will be brutally honest about it if it's something that she likes she'd be like this is great if she doesn't like something like this is like sh- she'd be like this is shit you're yeah. stupid this is not going to work 
and again it's uh, that whole thing of you know we get into fights and uh, about something menial that doesn't make a difference but at the end of the day it turns out that you know small things everywhere here and there do make a difference yeah, so taking time on that does really help yeah. and this time again th- what i'm doing is taking it one step at a time and as you said like nobody listens to albums anymore right yeah so instead of doing that we're like okay we can you know work on one single i mean i love listening to albums still like when i yeah i, I mean we're different we're different but, because yeah, we, lot, we're still in that whole thing of we we like to sit down and yeah. listen to an album from beginning to end a lot of people but have most that people, attention span kind of yeah like, yeah shriveled up now like i can't do that i i still don't get it when you go out with people and they play something on a phone or they play something on a you know portable speaker and they play for one minute and then skip skip and you're like oh my god i hate there's a special place in satan's oh asshole for people god. like that dude like genuinely i hate that it. i there's literally people like it's so funny like sometimes like okay uh, sicko mode by travis scott is the best example like sometimes i've played it to people and they were like this is the same song i'm like you haven't even heard it's so like four irritating. minutes through so annoying so people's attention spans are going down more and more and yeah, good luck getting people to watch this podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's good. Yeah. laughs> so it's uh, they, again this is like it's some you really have to know what you want to do what for yeah so i can what can you what are you guys expecting so right now you're recording yeah right and uh, two months recording i guess yeah i think yeah uh, mid by the end of uh, i think by june july we should have the ep out there mm-hmm. and everything else pretty much done i mean that's okay. like a very far deadline mm-hmm. but like yeah i think i think that i think that's the goal right now to have the album out um by then get the tour ready yeah. and then just hopefully by that time everything will calm down either that or it'll be a barren wasteland with zombies and corona be it's probably going to be like these guys and all of us guys trying to figure out how to do house shows house <laughs> yeah. so far for life house shows through a wall <laughs> studio Flexi session class. a studio <laughs> <laughs> just like snarky puppy 20 people at a time yeah yeah four all, shows all tested matinee. before they come inside four shows matinee 12 pm 2 pm 4 pm 6 pm go <laughs> that's how the mask and a blood test machine on side <laughs> that check. temperature yeah, machine <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah that's sick man yeah so kraken in a lab who's who's mixing two. it and mastering it then so kraken right now that? yes we have uh keshav thar is doing perfect our stuff for us because It just it's just made sense. Keshav is Keshav. Yeah, Keshav is Keshav. And in a lab also, Keshav miraculously is Keshav. <laughs> And yeah, so those are two those are two releases I'm very much looking forward to now because pretty much everything's done and mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's right here. It's around the corner. So I kicked off 2019 with uh, with a with a release with No Honey. Yeah. Literally no on Honey, New Year's. Moscow. And Moscow. And uh, then I I released my first. first song i collabed with in a lab for yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dreams yeah, 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 which, yeah so that was a great year and this year i'm looking forward to even more because it's just been consistent like i i like i like it when i have something that drops every i day. still like the fact that now you've come down a bit when it comes to work oh man i this i can't do this whole eight bands <laughs> shit anymore like genuinely eight bands i can't i don't think you can even sit today and count the amount of bands you play so, so that's the thing <laughs> i'm very i'm very uh lucky to have so many projects going on but i've i've come to realize that uh you cannot ever expect all the projects that you're playing with to always be 100% all the hmm. time and you know people have lives people have work they get involved with a lot of things but the ones that really are uh doing something at the time that they are doing something i like to throw myself into that and make sure that it really i do justice to it with whatever kind of yeah because I, i that was the thing so before i did I I started recording the last album. Yeah. I asked you. I said, "Listen, would you like to be a part of this?" Yes. And you were like, "Dude, I have no time." Yeah. Not I was very and unfortunate. You were like, and you were like, "Not because I don't want to do it." That's what. But if I do it, it's going to be all haphazard and it's not going to be great. Exactly. I was very very I that was actually a very upsetting conversation for me because that was <laughs> one of the first few conversations I had of this nature where yeah, people yeah. who I genuinely would have liked to have worked with were approaching me for uh 
for collaborations or to work with them or to join join projects with them and i just i was so swamped with uh, with work at that time that i uh, i had already done this thing where i joined i joined a band uh, well not joined a band but committed to a project which i couldn't give 100% to and i hated that feeling and i got through the gig somehow mm. but it just felt wrong it felt like i was doing injustice to the music and i'd rather that person who approached me find someone who does justice than yeah. have me on board and then i half ass it and then the relationship show sours the everything uh, is just music like music sours everything yeah. just becomes very tense. and then it, it and it's it's, a, it's like it's very easy for people to just go okay you know what he's been great at 50 gigs but this one gig he was horrible yeah and that yeah. one gig will fuck up your reputation and that's the thing right it's such a it's such a thin line between yeah. making it or yeah, yeah 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 and uh, a lot of people have shit gigs no no doubt and you only learn from them i have tons of them where yeah. i beaten myself up and you know hated the fact that i played badly but at the end of the day it was a learning experience where i knew for a fact that i just couldn't make that mistake again yeah. back on stage but thankfully none of those gigs have been show stopping gigs where i've been where i fucked up so bad that i've never gotten a show again but uh, there are situations where that could happen and i never want i never want to put myself in that scenario but then again luckily enough we got to work Yeah. together and yeah. actually play together live yeah. which was super fun and uh, and now yeah just yeah. this new song new single coming up <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're going to work soon <laughs> this is just what we do with our lives we work yeah we create content because content to create is everywhere exactly so yeah exactly. that's about it thank you sir thank you very much for having me very very privileged first, to be part of this first podcast first, first episode first podcast yeah. if this works out completely the way i wanted to hopefully hopefully uh, this is entertaining enough to keep people currently i have absolutely no support from anybody so i'm sort of hopping in and checking in cameras and what not so people who uh, who have advice on how to promote this <laughs> please, yeah, please get in touch with the please, please 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 <laughs> any advice like we we all try to do our stuff but any advice from anybody is always welcome like we're more than happy to have conversations where you tell us what to do <laughs> rather than people approaching yeah, you and yeah, being like yeah. how do i get my product <laughs> so where can people people find you uh you can find me uh in my house which in north is delhi? which is in north delhi <laughs> i won't disclose the location because i don't actually want you to come find me because i don't like you people but uh, <laughs> but uh, my music is available pretty much everywhere online uh, you just have to look up either my name or the act i play with which is uh, in a lab kraken zokova mosco uh, louder louder in a lab <laughs> in a lab zokova kraken zokova when is the zokova album coming uh, that's an I, i i don't have an answer i know it's a repeated question yeah. it's just a yeah uh, that, so zokova then uh, zokova kraken in a lab Como. mosco komorebi um but dualist inquiry hmm. um you know the drill you guys just need to come out to a show and uh, yeah. hopefully you'll catch me there yeah just But go to a weekend or he'll definitely play some <laughs> uh no honey of course Th- there are lots of projects i i love playing different kinds of music i'm going to be playing with this wonderful man also very soon um but yeah yeah i'll be hopefully back for a round two <laughs> where we talk about not so depressing thing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at some point hopefully yes. the situation is much better and we aren't quarantined <clears throat> yeah. into spaces that we are forced to do something like this exactly we like to uh, quarantine ourselves into a space uh, which isn't uh, you know it's not publicly warranted we just yeah, we yeah. just like to yeah. get into the bedroom once in a while like the everybody and... needs to go to their uh, crowdfunding campaign and pay money to do that i don't <laughs> so yeah but yeah uh It was lovely. Yeah, I had a lot nice of fun. Man. Yeah. Wow. Cool. See you guys.